Hey guys, PageBoy25 back again with another video. Today I'll be discussing some of my biases when it comes to cars, and later on revealing what my own car is, what I drive on a daily basis, my grocery getter, my daily driver. So, my last two videos have been kind of critiquing some more opulent, elegant cars in the industry, like the McLaren F1 and the Koenigsegg Jumeirah. Now, that's kind of a Scotty Kilmer type of mindset to just go out and critique all the bad cars. And they're not really bad. It's just that no one buys those things to daily drive. No one in the world. Unless you have throwaway money. And even at that, you still don't want to. Most people buy those vehicles to speculate. Um, and that's really kind of what makes them bad, in a sense. They're much less cars, more a diamond you would buy, or a gold bar you would buy to store away and wait for inflation to do its work and to make the car worth more. They just buy the car, speculators do, they buy the car, wait about five or ten years, and then they have themselves a true piece of history that they can sell for two, three, five, sometimes ten times what they paid for it, which is the case with the McLaren F1. Jay Leno bought his, I think, for only around three million back in the early 2000s, and now he's had it appraised at 18 million dollars, which is crazy, crazy. And um, the McLaren F1 is probably one of the most perfect examples of this I can think of. Um, and I can't really say the, the same for many other cars, except maybe the, and I can't even remember the name of it, but there's a very special Ferrari that's worth more than the F1, or about the same as the F1, around $20 million to $25 million. I think it's the GTO. I could be wrong about that. But um, the point is, there are a lot of elegant, opulent cars out there. Like, I keep saying those two words, and that's just really how I think of them. Those cars are just they're becoming more of a speculation than a true vehicle to enjoy. People don't buy them to enjoy them anymore, which is a real shame because they're such beautiful, amazing cars. And they have such, it's just, it's like this design that these artists, they spend all their time designing such beautiful cars, such amazing cars like Jamira. It's beautiful. It's just not the most practical. It's still very beautiful. Same with the F1. Same with most McLarens, um, most more expensive McLarens, the Senna, the P1, the Speedtail, and uh, same goes for Koenigsegg with the Jesco, and um, I can't even remember the other ones, but the Huayra too. The Huayra is very, very expensive. The Pagani, the Pagani Huayra and the Bugatti Devo. I could go on and on. Um, people just buy them to speculate, and it's a real shame. Um, it's... I wish the car world wasn't like that, but unfortunately we can't really change what the millionaires and billionaires do. Um, and it's for that reason I kind of tend to stay away from even the, just the typically faster cars, like maybe a Mustang GT or a Camaro RS, but uh, I, I, I have a very, very down-to-earth car, and I think you guys might be surprised with what it is. The car I drive is... A 2019 Toyota Camry LE. Now you might be saying that's not too particularly exciting or interesting. And I agree with you. It's not an eye-catching car. It doesn't really attract much attention. And if it passes you, you wouldn't think twice about it. The Camry is, to me, the quintessential car. If you want to be unrecognized and you want to go from point A to point B without attracting too much attention, you get this. And why I say you get the Camry over any other brand is because, of course, Toyota's renowned reliability the world over. Toyota's known for exactly that, and I, don't, I wouldn't want any other car brand for that reason. Toyota's probably been my favorite brand, and if I had to answer the question directly what my bias is, it's definitely towards Toyota. Now, there are obviously some exceptions that I would love to discuss in a future video, but for today, I'm just going to get you introduced to my car. Now, I'm not Doug DeMiro. I'm not going to bore you to death with all the quirks and features because, quite frankly, if you're a car person, you don't really care. It's a Camry. And Toyota, they've been making this car for years. And they're known for their legendary reliability in the 90s. 
and it's just one of the best cars ever made in my opinion and of course I don't think anything can really top the Corolla but then again that all ties back into my bias I could also say the Civic and the Accord are amazing cars because of the reliability and the Civic moreover because of how tunable and how amazing they can be in a performance situation but the Camry to me just it's something else I enjoy it greatly and it gets me from point A to point B and it keeps me comfortable and I just it's probably the best choice I could have made for my car and now I bet you're thinking okay well you picked a Camry fair enough they're really good cars and they get you from point A to point B as reliably as you could ever want but why didn't you get something a bit more flashy a bit more special instead of an LE maybe a SE or an XSE or a TRD and simply put I could have but it really I just my original car had been in the family for a very long time and it was just it meant a lot more to me to get an LE and that sounds like a silly reason because cars are just cars in the end especially these kinds of economy cars they, they really don't mean anything to anyone now like I would understand a Ferrari 458 could mean something to someone or probably more so if an F1 if, if a McLaren F1 um, but it's just not really in me to, to care about those cars as much as I do an economy car. These cars, to me, they make a difference in the world like those cars never could. These cars drive the world, literally. Those cars, they, they're just toys for the rich for the most part. And I couldn't imagine really any luxury car or, you know, all those super cars, hyper cars, and you know, to even an extent, muscle cars really doing what these economy sedans do. And that doesn't just go to, for Toyota, that goes for any four door vehicle, really, that has a nice amount of space. Like I said, the Accord and the Civic. Um, <clears throat> I don't really remember the names of the Mazda models, but I can go with the Hyundai Elantra and the Sonata. I mean, it's just even the more less reliable brands, the Chevy Malibu and the Chevy Cruze. It's really, those cars, these cars are what many people want. And more so nowadays with crossovers like the RAV4, the uh, Mazda, the, uh, I can't remember, the C CX3, I think it is, um, and the Hyundai Kona. And <laughs> I wish I could remember the Chevy Equinox. I don't know if they even still make that. But um, aside the point, the world is really driven by these economy cars it's nothing to do with those bigger cars that bigger in name cars that have you know better specs better horsepower and all that it's just that those are toys for the rich and these are what really make the world go so i think in the conversation of greatest cars of all time that economy cars should really be brought up a lot more than they actually are and that's it that's what i drive on a daily basis that's my daily driver and i know it's not the most fast choice it's not the most big choice it's not it's not particularly interesting but it's what i love and i enjoy driving it a lot so as always thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to like comment subscribe it's pageboy25 signing out